Um, I'm Kathy Procopio and I'm here with Gerard Legaspi and Isaiah Williams. They're two Eco Action veterans and they're going to help you with this phase of the campaign. Um, during this phase, your team is going to complete four tasks. The first one is you're going to select a type of plastic to reduce. The second is you're going to establish a measurement of your baseline. Um, that's the starting point for the plastics you want to reduce. The third is you're going to select an audience to involve in your campaign. And the fourth is you're going to create a SMART goal for your campaign. Now we have a few questions for the two of you about your experience and how you approach this phase of the campaign in the past. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so here's our first question. There are so many plastics out there in the world today. How do you select a plastic to focus on? So first, um, I researched a fact that um, 20 million um, plastic bags are used on school campuses each day. Um, and from there, I went over to my school and I just observed that fact was true and I just revolved my whole project around Ziploc bags. Your approach was to do some research and then to do some observation. Yeah. Right on. How about you? Um, another thing you can think about in terms of like plastic usage is a lot of times we focus the topic on recycling, but actually we know now that a lot of the things that we put in the recycling bin actually don't end up getting recycled. So your focus should be more of uh, reusable materials and sort of what plastics um, can be easily reused or easily re be replaced by reusable materials. So something like water bottles. Water bottles are used all the time and they're easily reused by something like this. Right okay, awesome. So those are some great strategies. Uh, I'm going to move you on to question two. In this phase, we're going to ask teams to measure a starting baseline or a starting point for the plastics they want to reduce. Um, and then the great thing about that is teams can use their starting baseline and compare it with their final results to see what kind of impact they've made over the course of the campaign. Um, what are some of your favorite ways to establish your baseline or to find out what that baseline is? So one way to find a baseline is to do a waste audit. So an audit is basically um, just sorting literally through your trash and seeing what's in your waste. Um, so like in my case, I found a lot of Ziploc bags, so that's why I revolved the project around that. Um, another thing you can do is just ask people. Surveys are very useful for just seeing what sort of plastics people are using, how they use them, um, if people are reusing or not. So um, just asking people with a survey can be a pretty simple way to get some results. Um, another way is uh, also an interview. So let's say you want to focus on a product that your cafeteria uses a lot, say like sports or even um, Tetra packets. You can interview a cafeteria worker on campus to see um, ways you can reduce that product. Um, and then the tried and true ways to just do some research online and see like what people are using, what different corporations have been using in terms of their plastic usage. And there's a lot of resources online to get a lot of information. That's great. So I hear you say audit, like audit the trash, do some surveys, do some interviews, or just go straight to the old internet. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, so our third question is, um, to maximize a team's impact, we're going to ask those teams to reach out and involve an audience, and that could either be the student body at their school, it could be community members, um, it could be a business, or it could even be policymakers like city government. How did you decide what type of audience to focus on? So um, first you want to find out who controls um, the product that you want to reduce. So say you want to reduce Ziploc bags, you want to reach out to parents because primarily they would yeah. be controlling what's in the students' lunches, especially in like elementary school and middle school. So maybe you're going to want to reach out to the PTA or in elementary schools you want to reach out to um, room parents um, and you can include it in school newsletters or even emails as well. So. Yeah, and along those same lines, uh, one of the things you sort of want to look at is sort of who can get things done and not just sort of the everyday people who are doing the plastic usage, sort of who can change that. And so one of the a good um, technique is just talking to the school board because they're the people who can actually make real change like quickly and um, the most effectively. So one of the things you can do is if you're trying to get rid of vending machines on campus, if you talk to the school board, you can replace those vending machines with hydration stations. So um, I think those resources Sources are sort of the most useful and most effective. And you had a lot of experience with that. Right. You put how many, how many? Two hydration stations in my uh, high school. 
Nice. Okay, so and here's our last question, which is um, we're going to ask our teams to uh, create a plastic redu reduction SMART goal. And a SMART goal, that acronym, it just stands for specific measurable, actionable, and actionable is just a fancy way of saying it, it lists the actions you're going to take, it's results focused, and it's time bound. So there's going to be a deadline written into your um, SMART goal for when you're going to complete your, your project. Um, can you guys tell us about one of your SMART goals that you've written for an eco project and then how you developed that SMART goal? Yeah, so um, this is a SMART goal we had for our waste campaign that we did recently. So by March 11, create a video that educates consumers about the impacts of food waste and include information on how to dispose of organics responsibly. Share the video on the city's website and urge five local businesses to incorporate organic waste in their waste disposal systems. Nice, very thorough. Um, I was going to say, so I hear specific and I hear measurable and I hear the actions you're going to take and I hear the time you're going to get done. But I didn't hear um, a result, the result you were focusing on. So was that intentional? So it wasn't intentional, <laughs> but um, that was something we definitely would have changed for our campaign. But we definitely urge all of you guys to make sure you have all five components of this miracle. Nice. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about how you developed the goal? Yeah, so um, our sort of process in terms of our team would be sort of a team meeting, um, whether that be online or in person. We sort of um, talk to everyone and get their opinions on what they would like to focus on and sort of how, um, like what aspects they, each person is important, each person mm -hmm. finds important. Mm -hmm. And so if we hear everybody's idea and we sort of listen to each um, perspective, we can sort of um, come to a consensus with the group and once we get that consensus it's pretty easy from there to just find the S-M-A-R-T. Awesome, well thank you so much for walking us through the, the four tasks. So we talked about um, uh, identifying your plastic and setting your baseline and your audience and your SMART goal. So thank you for all of that. Do you have any final tips for us on, that you can share with campaign teams about making this whole process work fabulously. So Isaiah kind of touched base on this in the last question. Um, like for our team, we just made sure that all of us were in consensus with each other and we made sure we got everyone's ideas into consideration. Yeah, and then one way we sort of did that was by assigning leaders. And so um, myself, Gerard, and Sophia were the team leaders for the group. And I think that um, even if we're not like bossing each other around, I think it's really important to have someone who's sort of keeping the conversation going and guiding our discussion so that they're productive and so that we can reach a consensus quickly and effectively and also make sure that everybody gets heard. Awesome, that's great. Thank you again for coming in and providing your expertise and um, good luck to all of you working on this phase as you go through. If you have any questions for our experts here, just um, email your Grades of Green mentor and we will pass those questions on um, and uh, enjoy phase two. Hi, I'm Gerard. And I'm Isaiah. Thank you for watching our webinar. And if you want to see more about Grades of Green, check us out on social media at Grades of Green.